Howdy. I, I figure I'd try that and see how it works. <laughs> it is episode 115 of Scar Bearers. I'm Chris DT Gordon. As always, thanks so much for being here with me. I greatly appreciate it. And thanks also to Nate and Britton Barron for helping me put this little road on the show. If you have any desire to have them work with you on your projects, you can reach out to them at Nate Barron. Well, folks, you know, as I keep reaching out for people to embrace the attitude of gratitude, I am constantly bombarded by people asking, hey, where can I get that? Where, what is your favorite dinosaur shirt? Well, mm. let me help you. You can go to ChrisDTGordon.com and click on the Chris DT Gordon's tag and pop shop. You can find the what is your favorite dinosaur shirt, sweatshirt, other tag like materials to help you spread that positivity and maybe start a conversation with someone you just met about your favorite prehistoric pal. So go to chrisdtgordon.com to grab that shirt, or maybe you want to talk with me about the attitude of gratitude. Whatever the case, I'm happy to hear from you. Well, I am joined by my new friend, Stephen Mac McElprang. Mac, how are you today? You know, Chris, I am doing phenomenal, but I'm getting better. Hey, that's fantastic. There's always room for improvement, right? I mean, I think there is. And I tell people that sometimes because I will have a great day. It's like right now, I'm going to be on here and talk to you. So that just can get better. Well, thank you. Well, I'm, now I have a high bar to, uh, to, to maintain. So I <laughs> do my best here. So now you and I are similar in that not only are we usually bispeckled, I have, I use your glasses, but we also have a, endured extensive reconstructive surgery but as with all cases practically the cause is different would you mind sharing your story with us absolutely absolutely uh second here over here i'll let everyone know that um oh man i got my page one out that i uh i didn't always have a removable leg <laughs> What, what's that what's that graphic on there by the way so i can oh this is this is this is it. what i do is this is my model i take uh, this is okay. what i do now too i go around and i just take pictures of my prosthetic leg all kinds of places like i'll do these oh, nice. and so i put it there because i want to show that something difficult can be done like i don't want to put myself there so much but i like the symbol so then other people can see that because there's so many people like oh i can't do that i can't do that but then if they see that somebody overcame something to get there i think it really kind of stimulates that oh yeah i can get there yeah i, I definitely agree and that's i think that's why uh we both you know try to reach out and share our messages is to help people realize hey tough life's life's tough things are things are hard doesn't mean you can't do it though absolutely well like you're saying everybody's struggles are different and they're not all as obvious like is is as mine or yours and yours isn't as obvious when you're all clothed right and everything yes. they're not it's, it's like when you have a missing limb, it's pretty obvious, but everybody has other things that are very difficult to deal with. You know what I mean? All kinds of life things that don't necessarily don't seem, but they're, they're difficult all the same. So, yes. Um, now, now you not, you previously were not missing a leg or two legs, right? Oh yeah. I'm missing, I'm missing half my foot too. So, um, Let's see. We got to start back. I, I could say that I'm a, a victim of the opioid epidemic, but I don't really like being that because back in 2002, um, right as that's going, I ruptured discs in my back and then I had my second and third back surgery. They fused me from L4 to S1. Mm -hmm. And and like a good American, I got strung out enough pain pills to kill a Jackson 5. Oof. <laughs> so props to Tito, you know, <laughs> you know, you know what I mean? I mean, I, Michael, he would call me up trying to get my doctor. And then I finally gave it to him and I haven't heard back from him. Ooh, <laughs> Inconsiderate guy that Michael yeah. Jackson. <laughs> I know. Anyway, long story we short canceled. here. Yeah, exactly. Long story <laughs> short here. Cause the pain pills, I was actually going to school for that time. Cause I got on those pain pills 
And I'm like, well, if I just have enough pain pills, it's the answer. And I, I got my degree in biology. I was going to be a pain doctor. I taught anatomy at UNR, University of Nevada, Reno, as an undergraduate and ran the cadaver lab. And um, then the pills started giving problems. They, they always, because they that's just what they do. They Everyone becomes addicted. Your body chemistry changes. You don't start producing different chemicals. But long story short, um, the pills ended up overdosing me and leaving me dead and bloated on top of my legs. Like I stood off the bed and came down like the world trade stacked right on top of myself, Ooh. which, which sounds bad, but in the long rendered thing, um, like you're saying, everything's perspective because they didn't find me for, they say 18 to 20 hours. And I had gangrene in my leg, in my left leg, and then my right foot. And I was stacked on myself. And then I had total organ failure. And then they were able to revive me back into a coma and I was on dialysis for a month and they put a shunt in my vena cava. But then I came out of a, a coma 10 days later and my leg was cut off below my knee and my foot was cut in half. And then two weeks later, they took my knee. And I'll tell you what, I thought I really needed that. But you can live without it. <laughs> wow. You know, you know, I appreciate the attempt. <laughs> um, well, this is the thing, though, when I look at it more, because the way my body was stacked up, because a month after I was out of my coma, they took almost two liters of fluid out of the lower left lobe of my lung. Oh, wow. That's how, that's how full everything was up. So the fact, and my heart was pumping really faintly mm -hmm. for a long, because I was piled up that way, enough blood to my vital organ system. So then when it finally failed and they found me soon enough that it got me back and I'm my brain is clear. I don't have brain injuries like that. You know, I, I slowed down a step and a half to see the beauty now is kind of how I see it. And, and then I got off all the pain pills. So then I, I mean, life came back. So it was like, I traded my leg and my foot for my life back in a way. Well, first of all, I'm sorry you had to go through that situation, but at the same time, I am proud of you for making that, making that connection to seeing the brighter side of the, you know, of this situation. What was your mindset when you first exited the hospital? Like, when was it, like, did you immediately say, oh, wow, everything's much better? Or did it take a little time to connect those positive dots? Um, there was, well, th there was like, you know, because we all have different, childhood traumas and different things and I was kind of the last born and I was kind of there wasn't supposed to be any more kids not like planned but my mother wasn't supposed to be able to have any more kids and then three and a mm. half years later then I got pregnant and then I come out and I kind of messed things up and so I was kind of you know and, and then and I had a highly religious family my my family was all um Mormon LDS and then I kind of didn't fit in with that so then and, and then that I know in a way I went kind of too hard on things and beat my body up. I'm learning all this. I'm doing a lot of reading, a lot of like, you know, discovering what our problems are. Like books like The Power of Now was a really good one to allow me to step back from the situations and view everything. Um, but I had all this, I, I was like, for a couple of years before that happened, I was pretty much uh, uh, isolated. And I'm a very extroverted person, but I was just on all these pain pills and I hated life. And I would go and I would teach college and come home and, and, and I didn't, I, you know, didn't talk to family, didn't talk to anybody. So then this real crazy thing happened and I woke up out of the coma and I had all these flowers along the wall from people for years and years ago that I, that I had more of an effect on that I ever realized. And so in a way, and I'd, I'd been hurt a lot in my life, like my back surgeries and, and everything else. Um, so in a way, I, I kind of took it as, okay, people do care. I can get over this. I can do something from it. You know, I, I you know, because the, the caring was a lot more substantial to me than actually the limb loss. Because like I said, I've been injured a lot and I've been dealing with it. Um, but I, I, I kind of just took it as a, as a different challenge. But at first, I didn't get off the pills because I was still so convinced because it was very hard to transition off the pills when you have pain because your pain level goes just through the roof because your your body chemistry 
that's what the withdrawals are, which everyone gets because you're, you're on opiates long enough. Your body stops producing the natural endorphins that give us like our normal enjoyment with everything. Like you go out in the sunshine, you go do something you want to do. You, you get a little dose of that, but you don't make them anymore. So then, so then when it bottoms out, you're, and it kind of treats your, our natural pains a little bit, but it's just gone. So then the transition there, and it takes a couple of weeks, I had to do like meditation and then you try to do exercise, whatever you could, because exercise will help release them. Um, but it took me, it took me again, I was in grad school because I still wasn't being myself. I was still kind of hiding from my family in a way, things in a way. Um, I went, I got into grad school for prosthetics and orthotics in Michigan. And I was still on pain pills and I overdosed again. Mm. And I, and I, they found me on my arm and I, and I got rhabdomyelitis, which means you basically urinate out your muscle. So, uh, so it almost cost me an arm and a leg. Yeah. <laughs> I was learn, waiting for that the joke lesson. to come up. Yeah. Yeah. It, 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 they just all write themselves. That's the thing. Yeah, exactly. So it, when, like what year was this, ha- did this happen that you first, uh, you know, lost your legs. And then I guess when was the second time you overdosed? That was 2008. And then it was 2000, um, the end of 2009. Okay. All right. And then so, I'm like, I got to do something different. And I went, I got, I went to rehab and pushed through it. And then I, yeah. You know, we are very, again, I find a similarity between the two of us because when you saw those flowers, it was, it's very reminiscent of me being told by my wife, all the great things that people were doing for us while I was in a coma, you know, to make that connection that, okay, while I look like a discount Deadpool uh-huh. and have body parts, you know, take it from one place and put on another, you know, looking like some, you know, some kids, you know, homemade uh, lego set yeah things are not bad you know things could be a lot worse in fact they're great you just have to look past the bad part to see it absolutely when after the second overdose when was it when you started realizing that this is uh, something given to me that i have to use to benefit others well, after, after I got off and I went to rehab, I started seeing that um, just because, cause I, I still like to do stuff. Like I'll still, when I, I started living again, cause the one thing on pain pills, you don't live cause nothing's enjoyable. But so then I got off and like, I went to the pool and I, I I'm an adrenaline junkie. So I went and I'm like, I'm in the halfway house um, out of rehab, you know, transitioning out. And we went to the pool and there's a platform and I'm like, I'm going to go up there and throw a backflip off that. I'm like, I'm going to throw a double backflip. And they're like, yeah, all right. Or whatever. And I got up there and I threw, I threw, well, I did one and a half and I backflopped so oh, miserably nice. off the middle. Cause they wouldn't let me go off the top platform. Yeah. It, it, but it hurt. But at the same time, it like, it was like a smack in the face that, whoa, there's, there's being alive again. It's like, I remember what being alive again is again. And yeah. so that really, change everything it was like oh i did something exciting i used to do and even though that hurt but it's like that pain was just like oh i'm alive <laughs> you know, like, okay really quick go. question i don't mean to cut i don't mean to i uh, but no, i have fine. to know this have you ever done a backflip like did you ever do a backflip when you had your legs oh yeah okay how how was your your uh your torque affected i guess i'm not sure if torque it's is the right little, term no no yeah. i see what you're saying yeah to kick to kick through to keep spinning yeah um how was that affected when you did it without legs it's it's a little bit less but the motion of backflip still pretty fluid there like a front flip's a little harder um because okay. I'll, I'll i'll do front flips off things now too because i only have that half a foot so it's hard to when you don't have toes and a ball of a foot to jump off of yeah um but yeah, you'll get, I'll get halfway through. And that's what happened on this back. But I tried to do a double and I did one and a half because I couldn't mm. go all the way through. And then I tried it again and I just stayed tucked and I almost got through. I actually put it on, on YouTube. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I got to remember what the name it is, but yeah, that, that, that the torque is a little different though, for sure. Cause yeah, I was thinking there's like less body weight. So it has, it has yeah. to affect somehow. 
So after you're done doing by, you know, back smackers and jumping off of <laughs> swimming, uh, you know, diving boards, what were you, you know, and that was like, okay, how soon after that did you leave the halfway house? I left it uh, not too long ago after that. I think it was okay. probably two weeks. And then I moved in with someone else from AA. And then, and then like, actually, I'm, I'm not for AA or against AA. I don't do it anymore. I, I found a different way of recovery. It's called rational recovery. It's actually just, everything is just me convincing myself to do whatever like the addiction thing it's it's not that i'm addicted that i have to do it that's all my brain that's just how i see it that's all my brain spinning it to do to do whatever behavior okay Um, but oh man i lost my train of thought there um what was the question one more time we were talking about (laughs) after the halfway house well, oh, you know, okay. what, what did you do after the halfway house and, you know, how, how we're trying to get basically oh. to where you are today. Okay. Um, well then someone I met through the AA though, they, because this is what I was doing for a while too. I had a prescription for, for marijuana, which never had me any problems. It'd keep my mind clear. It would just, it would just make it easier to deal with the pain. Cause I still have a lot of pain. Like right now I'm fused from L4 to S1. And then my disc above it is ruptured. And the one above that is herniated. And then I have a herniated disc in my neck. Oh, which wow. I'll do, which I'll do decompressions. And then I'm really focusing on my health now um, because I see how I've neglected myself for so long. Mm-hmm. Like it, it, then you'll just, you know, you'll, you'll fall into drinking or something just because the pain is, is overwhelming. So yes, I've been really focusing on getting my health um, back in strength, but I, I started using cannabis and I don't use any other pills at all. And then that wasn't so acceptable in the, uh, the AA circle. Okay. So then I kind of went away from that. And then, and then it wasn't very acceptable with my family either, but I'm like, this is actually making me be able to be functional. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we kind of had a little bit of a falling out. And then that's when I, I went on, I went on, I sold, (laughs) I love this. This is true. And it's just so ridiculous. I sold one of my, one of my, my expensive prospect leg on eBay. (laughs) (laughs) It was a C leg. And this is just all true. It like stands for computer leg. Yep. Um, and I hawked it and then I bought a car. I bought a used car. I bought a, a Pontiac Sunfire. And then oh, I, decided, Sunfire. I just decided, well, because I called it my mobile home because I don't need as much leg room. Yep. There you go. <laughs> so, so then I, uh, I just took off and, and went on what it's called. Like I said, here's my book. Like not a walkabout. Hop about, the, the hop about right back to where I belong. But so, so that's the top of Angel's Landing in Zion, if you've ever been there. Okay, no, I haven't. I've seen many pictures of it. It's just beautiful. Oh, it's an amazing place. Because where are you at? You're over in the, in the, in the Midwest? No, New in Ulm, the... Minnesota. Okay, so you're way up in the top there. You get to see the Northern Lights, huh? Yeah, we're, we're, I'm among the top 12 states. Because I went over there. I went Physically, to Michigan. literally. Like, I, I was in, in uh, Ypsilanti, job. Michigan. Well, I know what you mean. Yeah. Um, but it wasn't quite as high as where you are. But you know, oh, yeah. In, yeah. in the winter, you got it dark until nine, ten o'clock in the morning. And yep. Well, it's it's not nearly that bad. Um, I actually grew up in Michigan though. Okay. Just no uh, just north of Flint. Okay. Yeah. So uh, but yeah, we are I if I have if I'm correct here. We are north of Muskegon. That's where my brother lives. And okay. so that's where about we are. It, you know, we line up with that, you know, maybe around a new era, that area. Um, but it, it's, we don't really see the northern lights. I think we still have too much light pollution for that. Oh, okay. But I think it's when you get and it's up to, up to bra- the boundary waters is where you can see those. But it's still, it's still, you know, uh, I'm, I'm waiting for that last snowstorm to hit and you know it's may as we're recording this and yeah yeah you no know, I, I i took the uh the snow tires off trepidatiously a couple of weeks ago <laughs> um, i have to ask you though back to the car how do you drive a, a car with no legs well see i, I know it sounds like a setup to a joke but 
No, I, I got, I got most of the right foot. You know, all you need is the right foot. Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> but you could do, I mean, if we had a left leg, you just tilt yourself, but I just drive an automatic. Okay. I'll tell you something that's crazy though. My prosthetist in Vegas, he, he was born a congenital. He had one arm and he has uh, four fingers on this arm and he's a both congenital AK above knee. Oh, wow. And he, he drives, he drives without hand paddles. I'll just do uh, it with a, uh, I, I was with him. He's driving his truck and he uses his prosthetic legs on the pedals. Oh, wow. And I was very impressed. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I was very impressed. Did you uh, ever think, well, I'm just going to get out here and open the door and roll out. <laughs> I was, well, I was just more fascinated than anything. I mean, yeah. I, yeah, I had me my mind blown. So you got your car, you traded a, you know, that lot, that uh, car cost a leg. So yeah. You, you get the car and then what, uh, what next? Well, then I started doing, I started doing, well, I used to do stand up and now I generally sit down. Yeah, excellent. <laughs> then I was doing stand up. So I was driving around and I was just trying to figure out, I just ride to people off of Craigslist and be like, I, I'll, I fly you by, where do you want to go? <laughs> And then I kind of traveled all over trying to sort out, just trying to figure out life again after the pain pills, because that kind of stunts your personal development in a way, because you're, yep. you're not really all kinds of things. And um, then I hit a cow <laughs> by natural bridges. <laughs> you hit a cow? Yeah. Wow. Okay. So, so, so then that, fast food. Yeah. So then it killed my mobile home. And then yeah. I, uh, I kind of hitchhiked around because that was by Moab and I hitchhiked around and went to Vegas and kind of worked on my comedy there. And then for a couple of years and then went up to Northern California because I, I needed to work. I needed to find a way to get a car. Mm. And so I was kind of working with the cannabis farms because, <laughs> because this is the bad thing. I mean, um, like with me, disability is more of a liability to an employer is what I've been noticed. You know what I mean? Like, it doesn't matter kind of what your skills are, but they'll, they'll see, well, what if this happens? Or what if this happens? Or what if they do this? Or what if they do that? And I've kind of heard that from my brother on different things. Not that he's saying to me, but he's really pointing me about all the liabilities that businesses look at. And so I've kind of, that's why I'm really wanting to go out like what you're doing, speaking and doing things, which I think is a much greater impact on everyone anyways. I don't think we're meant to work for other people. Mm -hmm. I think we're meant to go out and do things and actually inspire people and uh, have a, a, a greater purpose, which harder than, you know, someone else you're working for them, they have it all sorted out, but I think it's going to be a much more fulfilling and uh, useful way. Yeah. Yeah. definitely. I wish someone would just drop me some, uh, some speaking gigs and just have me go at it. But yeah. That's not how it goes. You got, you know, no. you have to put the nose to the grindstone. So but no, I, I definitely applaud you for, you know, wanting to share your story. Oh, have you spoken at many places so far? I haven't, which I really need to change that. I will see, I, I've been doing comedy, getting myself yeah. more comfortable. Um, but I really, I, I've worked on my speech and then I've been, I keep changing it, you know okay. what I mean? Which isn't bad because I'll go along and then I'll be like, no, no, because I keep changing what I want my main um point to be which i really like i don't have the picture well i have it here uh my main point in 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 life which i want to show people is that you're not defined by your mistakes yeah because so many people are so worried about making mistakes and that's like the greatest chance for us to learn yes yeah i i like to think either win or you learn yeah and um and it, it's so well i mean this could be taken the wrong way but Cause, cause I'll, I'll, i like, I like just to call things how they are. Like I always say that I'm, I'm, I'm not disabled. Cause I don't like disabled. If you break the word down, this means not enabled means capable. Mm -hmm. I rather, I prefer crippled, which means you lost the use of the limb. Um, yeah. But then I say that there, there are people that are, they're more crippled than me with all their limbs because fear, which will disable your head, which disables your entire body has them not doing anything. Like it doesn't yes. matter what parts they have, but they're, they're so afraid to take any of these chances that they could be, you know, uh, completely paralyzed and everything. It doesn't matter because they are paralyzed by their fear of exactly. things. Exactly. So, um, 
So, yeah. yeah. So speaking about your message, uh, you held up a book earlier. Tell me a minute, or, you know, just give, give me a minute about that book. So the book, like it was a lot of what uh, I was saying there. Yep. The hop about. Um, it's a, it was a lot about me selling my leg and then wandering around and the people I met there. Um, like one story is, a like I hiked telescope peak in death Valley, which is 11,049 feet. And I ended up sleeping on the mountain twice. Cause I'm vastly underprepared, but I'm like, <laughs> I gotta do it. I'm here. I gotta do it. And then, um, like the first story was hiking angels landing, which is that picture and all the people I met. And like, mm -hmm. I kind of call out the, the, what I call the trail angels. Mm -hmm. which were the people that ended up you know taking my poles and helping me and giving me water and and um different things like that and then i yep. i go back into how i hit the cow and all the madness that kind of came from there and then um it circles back around to reconcile with my family which i think is is nice because that's really how it happened and i'm really because family is very important that's um, so. that's fantastic i was wondering if that you ever made the you ever made that reconnection with them so that's fantastic that that happened yeah thank you i i totally agree i was for such long i'm like no i don't need anything and it's just not true like we all really do need each other and family is very important exactly so where can someone find this book mac you can get it on amazon or you can get it on austin mccauley um and i'll tell you right now i'm in the process of recording the audiobook Okay. So I'm narrating it and I'll give it a little bit of flair and I'll give the right, you know, everything to all the stories because, um, which I think is much better than having them do it. Yeah. Because, you know, because else. you're right. There, there is something extra you can give to it because you felt the emotions as you're going through the experience. Yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 it's fun. I'm learning. It's a lot, it's a lot of work to record it. People don't understand, but I'm really, oh, yeah. I'm really having, I'm the more fun I have with it. Cause I was doing it at first, just trying to make sure you read this right and be, you know, a certain pace, but people just want to be entertained. So I'm just having fun, like with anything in life, right? If you're having fun, it's much better. Yes. Yeah. Cool. And if you're having fun, they're going to have fun. Yeah. It's just, it's just contagious all around. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll show something else that I'm doing. Right. I, uh, okay. like I was saying with the, uh, the photo book. This yep. is my old leg. Well, this is one picture That's I really, see. I really like. Um, yeah, but I have here. I have the Grinch who stole my leg. Oh, nice, nice. The Grinch who stole femur. <laughs> yeah. But like, um, one of my favorite pictures in here. It's not as because I'll have like that newspaper rock, and that's it. Yeah. Tetons nice but i went to uh oh this is the top of telescope peak oh wow yeah you are really up there it's the most prominent peak in the lower 48 because you get your look uh, death valley which is negative 282 in the valley and mm -hmm. then telescope peak is 11,049 feet and it is uh it is something else of a view but my favorite picture just because if you look at the the box okay it says who who says i can't and that was just on there and so oh. we're at, at fourteen thousand. it's the third highest peak in california and then i just got my prospect leg kind of sitting there and i think it's kind nice. of a, a good statement that that is a huge statement that's a huge uh you know announcement to people that it's like you said before you know disabled is in your head you yeah. know it, it's it, you you hold yourself back or you let yourself go so uh really quick uh mac what do you have going on in the near future for yourself i'm writing i'm writing another short story compilation and then i'm writing a novel right now which is um gonna be more of the addiction side i've been doing a lot of study and reading like i, I it's i'm kind of taking some notes from kurt vonnegut i mean okay. i'm not a bad person to take notes from how he'll have kind of some autobiography, but it's some fiction in there because you can say so much more when you can yes. fictionalize it. And so I'm going to try to do that with the addiction side to try to help people out that way, because I really think I can help a lot of people um, on the addiction end as, 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 as far as other things. Um, but and then I'm trying to get in. I'm still working on my speech and I'm going to try. I've been 
I've been making sure I want to make sure that I actually have myself, my message really wrapped up though. Cause I don't yeah. want to go out and have it, you know, just half assed at all. You know, I, yeah. I want it, I want it to be there and I want to get people excited and I, I don't want to go in there and then have them being like, why is this guy here? Yeah. Yeah. But also don't be, you know, like you said, don't, you know, don't try to be stuck with on, on the thought of perfection. You just got to go yeah. do it and learn from there. That's absolutely the yeah. fully true too. So uh, Mac, we got to uh, wrap this up. I apologize, but I have my one question I have to ask you, and I alluded to it before. What is your favorite dinosaur? See, I had it, I had it as a raptor, but I really don't. I, I, I've always liked to try ceratops. All right. And I don't know why. It's like, it's like a rhino, but with three horns and it's got a big shield and it's just kind of like the fun, nice one that wanders around. And I always like to try ceratops. I don't know. There you go. That's all good. And really quick, where can people find you? Um, my, my YouTube is Tolis Warrior. Tolis Warrior. Excellent. And, and my Instagram's the same thing. Okay. Easy. I like to keep it simple as well. Same thing as much as I can. Well, yeah. Mac, it's been a lot of fun to hang out with you and chat a little bit about your journey. I'm so excited to share this with people. Again, thank you very much for being here, man. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Definitely. And folks, please check Mac out at Tolis Warrior on Instagram and YouTube. Come check me out at chrisdtgordon.com. You can download a free tag one sheet. You can, again, come grab one of these fun, what is your favorite dinosaur shirts and have, right. have strangers come up and just tell you. And you know, you can, it's, a, it's a little weird, but it's okay. We're all connecting. It's all, that's what this is all about. And then maybe we could chat about the attitude of gratitude as well. Please also like, subscribe, and share these messages, both mine and Max. Jump onto our YouTube pages and subscribe so we can get the word out about how we can make not life not perfect, but make it better. And that's what it's all about. And also connecting with people because as Max said earlier, we all need each other. So with that, thank you so much for being here with me today. Please have a great day. And remember to pass on perfection and go for greatness. Mm -hmm.